Welcome back to the Flow Friday Sports Show on Flow FM. Spud Mackay is on the line with me to talk Northern Areas footy. Great to speak with you again, Spud. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Dan. Yep. Great to have you on. How's the farm going? We're past Anzac Day now. Plenty of things uh, fresh in the ground? <laughs> Nothing in the ground and there's no no moisture. So uh, from the cropping point of view, it's not a great concern yet. Um, a lot of our best crops have been sown in June. From the sheep point of view, it is because we've got sheep that are lambing and they're just about finished now and it's really good weather for the lambs. Uh, they're doing really good, but of course they, they do look to have a bit of green feed as they get on a bit and that's going to be hard to come by because the later it is for it, uh, before it starts raining, the, the colder it gets and then as we get the frost and so the feed doesn't grow as well. So we just got to work it through. All right, well, we're well into footy season now, so no doubt some rain is on the way pretty soon. Let's get into the first round of action in Northern Areas footy, and uh, it was a 10-goal loss for Jamestown Peterborough, 10-7-67, going down to the brook, 19-13-127, so uh, pretty convincing there for the brook. Yeah, they were. Uh, Certainly the first quarter was uh, uh, none too convincing uh, with uh, the... uh, Crystal Brook caught scoring no goals and six points, and Jamestown Peterborough only managed two points. So after that, Crystal Brook uh, they, they scored eight goal in the in the se- second quarter there, and Jamestown Peterborough kicked a couple. And then I, I guess you, you sort of look at Jamestown Peterborough. They they scored four in the third and four uh, four in the last quarter. Uh, but meanwhile, I mean uh, Crystal Brook uh, they kicked about eight goal. Uh, you know, in that last quarter. So that, that made the score look worse than what it probably was. Uh, it was probably a bit closer than that. But, uh, it, uh, you know, you've, you've got to be able to keep a, a lid on it in the last quarter. First game back after the off-season is always the hardest. No-one's quite prepared for uh, j- just how physical <laughs> and how draining the game is. No matter how much pre-season you do and how hard you prepare, it uh, still hits you like a ton of bricks most weeks. So that first quarter scoreline reflecting that pretty well. But yeah, great win by the Brook to start the season. Bit of work for Jamestown Peterborough to do, so we'll keep an eye on them. Let's go to the tightest game of the round. Oruru in a thriller over Southern Flinders, 8-10-58 to 8-7-55. What's the story here, Spud? Do we have a, a goal after the siren or any sort of drama like that? <laughs> no, there's it was just a, a real tight affair and uh, uh, there wasn't much in it all day. I did speak about, I thought Southern Flinders would be the big improvers this year under under Scott Brand. Uh, he's a really good coach and uh, having coached some of those uh, in, in the senior Colts, he would, uh, he would know what they're capable of and I, I expect them to probably get better, whereas I would expect Oru to get a lot better too because uh, I don't think they were... Uh, firing on all all cylinders there last week, but that that's the way it is. And uh, Southern Flinders failed to score in the last quarter, and Oru only scored a couple of points. So that gives you an indication that it was uh, the the defences were working pretty well for both sides. Yeah, it often happens in the last quarter of a tight game like that. Everything just tightens up. Often the umpires put the whistle away a little bit. Everyone's running on fumes. Uh, so yeah, not too uncommon, but. Uh, a good showing from Southern Flinders against the reigning Premiers and a good win to open the season for Oruru. And in our last game, BMW 16-8-104 over Broughton Mandura 8-8-56. Good win for BMW to start the season. Well, certainly down at Broughton, uh, that, that is a really good win. Uh, probably a bit bigger margin than what we might have expected. But uh, again, it, it just shows that uh, BMW, having uh, been disappointed with the grand final result last year, uh, want to try and give themselves another chance and uh, that they certainly started off very well in this first match. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they, they they did really well scoring five goals in the last quarter to only one by uh, Broughton Mandura uh, and that sort of perhaps was uh, allowed the score to look a little bit worse than what it might have uh, if at three-quarter time. It was only 11 goals to seven, so... Uh, yeah, good good effort by uh, BMW, and uh, um, we'll have to wait and see. But Broughton probably will improve on that. All right, and heading into round two uh, tomorrow, still just two days removed from Anzac Day, uh, there's going to be some uh, ceremonies, and I don't know if there's going to be special Guernseys or anything like that, Warm, but there are going to be some ceremonies throughout the day. Yes, Dan. Uh, look, uh, it, it is the, this is the Anzac round. As a result, the, uh, the games start a bit earlier, uh, junior Colts start at 9.15, uh, 
senior colts 1040 minis at 1220 b grade at 1250 and then they have an anzac ceremony following that uh, b grade game at around about 230 uh, prior to the a grade game and the net dollars come across and they all are part of that that anzac ceremony uh, there will be uh, an AP Sullivan medal and a Ruth Kitto medal reward, uh, awarded to the best footballer and best netballer, respectively. And that uh, you know, that is only in the in the one game. The rest of them are just known as as ANZAC medals. So um, the reason for that is that those other two medals are actually provided by Community Football, and uh, it uh, they they actually were responsible for having them named like that. So it, it's a great concept. I, I just like the way that we. Uh, have brought that forward and it, it just gives the younger generation as, as you can see yesterday how how many young people are embracing the Anzac service and uh, I just think that that ensures that it will go on for a, a couple more generations and hopefully longer than that because it, it's a really good uh, good that we acknowledge those that have sort of given their, their lives and their service in order to make our country a lot better. Couldn't agree more. And obviously with uh, sport and particularly footy being such a massive part of Australian culture, it really is a great place to uh, yeah, to reflect on the Anzacs and to keep that spirit alive. So that is very good to hear. But let's get into the games themselves. Jamestown Peterborough are looking to bounce back, taking on the reigning premiers, Oruru. It's a home game for them at Victoria Park. So uh, how do you think they'll bounce back in this one? Uh, first game for Jamestown Peterborough, yeah, it, uh, it's a hard ask, isn't it? Uh, Oruru, you know, you, you're expecting those to be right up the top. Uh, but look, Jamestown Peterborough, Wyatt McKinnon uh, was very good uh, across the half-back line for him uh, last week. He's a great reader of the ball. And you, if you get somebody like that, they, they're able to sort of help the young ones out uh, while they're out there. They can sort of say, well, you know, the ball's coming down the other side there, which is something you find hard to do as a, as a coach. If you're on the bench there, you can't really get them across there quick enough. So, like, he's been a big addition to, to Jamestown Peterborough. Henry Hall was good there last week. Nick, Nick Rin is a, is a top footballer for them, uh, play, plays up for it. Unfortunately, he hasn't got the... Uh, physical fitness uh, because of knee injuries, etc. that he's had. Uh, so he, he tends to have a small run on the ball, but it'd be great if he was able to sort of have more time down there. Uh, Max McKeo and Henry Moore in the ruck, uh, they, they will have big jobs there. Uh, whereas Oruru, Oli Dignan was, was really good for him last week. I think he kicked about six goal uh, in that first game. So he, he'll be a danger for them. Uh, Xavier Redden started very well. He was the only one out of the three imports that, that sort of um, made the best players there, but I'm sure that Isaac Moller and uh, Tom Head will, will, will improve. So I, I, I expect Iru to win, and uh, hopefully Jamestown Peterborough can give a good account of it. All right, we'll keep an eye on that one for next week. Southern Flinders hosting Broughton Mandura, and both sides looking for their first win of the year. Yeah, this one's at Gladstone. Southern Flinders got a good good sprinkling. They've got Shane Ballantyne, who is a, a really good uh, a zone player, so like top shelf. Matt Spencer was really good for him last week. And then you've got Zeke Kay has come back, who, who's strong in defence for him. And then Scott Coombe and Max Flowers uh, are good youngsters. For Broughton Mundura, well, I guess uh, they, they will be looking to, to bounce back from last week. Uh, and they, they certainly will want to bring their, their A grade game up, up to Gladstone. Uh, ben Geitenbeek uh, was in their best players there last week, and Jackson McGregor Day. Uh, along with uh, William Hewitt, Bodie Sims and Tommy Whelan, their coach. Uh, they've got a, uh, still got a, a reasonable side there and uh, we'll be looking for the results of this one. Maybe uh, uh, Broughton Mundura, but it would, certainly won't surprise if Southern Flinders get over the line here. All right, and in our final game, BMW taking on the Brook. It is a top-of-the-table clash as it stands right now. Oh, yes. Uh, this, this will, again, is pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, BMW... Still, they haven't lost a lot. Uh, I think they might have one out from, from last week uh, who was in their best players. But Cody Wolford is, was good for them. Ollie Smart. Uh, Braden Battersby in defence is, is really good. Jamie Robinson and Brad Taylor. Uh, he kicked about four goals. Now, Brad's been around for a long time, played in the Barossa uh, after having started his career up in Northern Areas and has come back. Uh, he, he's still kicking the goals, so uh, he can't be left unattended up there. And Crystal Brook, well, they will be uh, relying on uh, uh, Will Coombe, Braden Kirk would be their two big ones. But then they've got the experience of Luke Capitola, 
uh, Joel Millard, and of course Brad Eagle is very good for him in, in defence. So uh, uh, th- this will be be a tight game, but it's at Wilmington, so we'll go BMW just. All right, tips in for BMW. That is the round two action to look forward to. Thank you very much, Spud. Enjoy the footy this weekend, and I'll Thanks. speak to you next week. Thanks, Dan. Should be another great Saturday. The weather's looking really good for the weekend, which is great for the live golf as well.